Hello and welcome, I'm the Rambling Director, and today we're going to be talking about The Young Messiah. This film came out in 2016, and yet somehow I have not seen it until just last night. I really don't know how this film eluded me, because I had actually heard about it, but I just had never sat down and watched it. It is ultimately a really good film, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about it. So again, it came out in 2016, and it was directed by... Cyrus Nowriste. I don't care if I pronounced it wrong. No matter what I said, you guys will leave comments that say I pronounced it wrong. Now, if you like the Anne Rice Jesus books, this is going to be right up your alley. I've read some of the Anne Rice Jesus books. I can't remember which ones. It's been several years now. Uh, but I listened to them on audiobook, and I really appreciated them. I thought they were very good. Uh, in this case, Jesus is presented as a seven-year-old boy, and uh, the the film follows sort of a year in his life as he is being tracked by the successor to the King Herod who wanted to murder him, his, his son, obviously, who has taken the throne now, and the new Herod is not much different than the old. So there is some things that you kind of see where it's going. You kind of know from the beginning that Jesus is going to, as the scripture says, learn and grow in obedience as he grows up. And, and so this is sort of the first step in that process. We're going to see Jesus being introduced to his powers and what he already knows about them and what he already knows about himself, some of the things that he can just kind of instinctually feel and some of the things that he needs to be told by other humans. So, Sean Bean is probably the biggest name in this movie, and he really does a great job performing this role as a centurion who is hunting down the young boy Jesus. Now, he's doing this at the command of Herod, uh, the successor of the King, King Herod the Great, and as he's going looking for the miracle boy, the boy who brings people back to life... He is, has this sort of mysterious past, and we know he was stationed in Bethlehem, and he's not exactly comfortable talking about what happened in Bethlehem, but you get the idea. He was one of the soldiers who went out to kill the babies, and this is something that really bothered him. He did not like having to do that, and it has stuck with him, and he's felt a lot of guilt for doing it. The movie does, however, have some surprising cameos, or I guess they're sort of cameos, but they also, they don't draw much attention to them, so they're just sort of there to be good actors doing what good actors do. One of them is Argus Filch from Harry Potter. David Bradley is the actor's name, and he does a fantastic job as an old rabbi. And uh, th then another one that I really didn't see coming, in fact, I didn't recognize him at first, it's David Burke. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know that I am obsessed with the 1980s, 1990s Granada production of Sherlock Holmes, which starred Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes himself, and in the first season, it starred David Burke as Watson. David Burke plays a blind rabbi, and he's a fantastic role, and he does a great job. With just the few lines he's given, he really gets across... Just the, I mean, this man, you can tell that when Jesus changes his life, I won't reveal what he does, but it absolutely sends chills up my spine the way David Burke portrays this character. And, and it was good of them to pick an actor who was, a, who was a great actor in his own right and could pull off performing a role like this with very few lines and very little screen time and make a giant impact. Adam Greaves Neal plays Jesus Christ in this and he does a great job. I mean, this kid is really good. I don't know why he only has like three or four screen credits to his name because he does a fantastic job in this. I was very impressed. Uh, the rest of the cast, all fantastic too. So let's get into a little bit more of the story and the religious aspects that I, as a Christian, what I liked and what I didn't like. One of the things I really, really liked about Anne Rice's depiction of Jesus is that she didn't portray him as knowing everything. She understood uh, from the, the hints we get in scripture, Jesus makes it pretty clear that the Father 
and Jesus, they know different things. That God the Father knows everything, but there are things that Jesus himself doesn't know. Not because he can't know them, but by submitting himself to the Father, he has followed the Father's will that he would not know everything. He would live life as a human. And so one of the things I really liked was the sort of kind of daring move of making Jesus not all-knowing. He knows a lot, and there's a lot he kind of guesses at, but he doesn't know everything. I think theologically, that is sound. You can, you can come up with a good argument in scripture for why you would portray him that way. You can disagree with it, but I didn't see it as a problem. I thought it was a strength of the movie that it took a little bit of a risk by saying to its audience of, of uh, in America, it's going to largely be uh, a group of, of Christian denomination that is uh, is very harsh about things like that, and they have their way that they see Jesus when they read the Bible, and the way their preacher told them to think about Jesus, and they don't like any challenge to that. So I thought it was good that they took that and went out on a limb with it. I loved Cleopas, uh, the uncle of Jesus, and the father of James, Jesus' cousin. I thought that that was a very nice relationship to bring into the party uh, by creating that character in, in, a, in a way that you see where they're kind of going with his development, but he's a nice foil to Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary are presented as very righteous, upstanding people who love God and they want to do the will of God. They're just not always sure how to do that. And Cleopas is really good at bringing in kind of that third person, listen, I can see this from the outside and I'm telling you, you guys got to tell this kid sometimes because everybody is is literally doing all but telling him he's the Messiah and he's going to guess and, he, and you need to make sure he gets the right idea about that. And there's a great line where Joseph and Mary are talking and Mary says, how do we tell him? How can we possibly lay this out for him in a way that he'll understand? And Joseph says, you know, that's a good question. Better question. How do you explain God to his own son? I thought that was a great line. That really nails home what these characters are going through. And I thought it was a very nice presentation. Jesus is followed by this demon. We get very early on, we understand that this is a demon. And when we start to realize which demon this is, that this is not just any demon, this is Satan himself. Uh, it's done in a way that is very powerful and very haunting. It is kind of chilling. Um, and and the, the reaction of Jesus is very good when he shows the city of Jerusalem burning because of, uh, theoretically because of a, of a rebellion. They don't really go into exactly why that's happened, but we understand that there's great violence and turmoil in Jerusalem because of the Roman and the Jewish uh, uh, forces clashing. And so it was, it was really cool that when they showed that, Jesus, as a seven-year-old child, his immediate reaction was to get on his knees and pray to his Father in heaven. And Satan doesn't like that. And he immediately gets angrier and angrier, and he starts to show his cards that he does not think that Jesus is, um, is, is the Son of God yet. He doesn't realize that. He thinks that Jesus is an angel in disguise, and that's why he's trying to trip him up. He does not realize the full extent of what is happening here. We have things like Jesus bringing a, a bird back to life. Now, theologically, that makes a lot of sense, because when you think about the nature of, of who God is, Jesus says, I am the life. The nature of a, a being who is life itself. God is life. There is no life before or beyond God. So, what is the nature of life when it doesn't know anything else to give life? He sees death, and it's not good. And God gives life and declares it good. That's the first thing God does. So, I thought that was quite a cool little element. Uh, you can see a lot of theological layers to that. They're very careful to make sure Jesus never commits any sins. But they try to make sure that you see that this is a child and he is going to do things that a child would do. So, you know, and that's hard to work around. And I appreciated the fact that they went the extra mile of trying to keep him sinless while also not trying to make him look too perfect because otherwise you wouldn't be able to follow his story uh, if he wasn't a little bit of an underdog. And, and I think they pulled that off very, very well. 
Finally, I'll just give a couple spoilers right here at the end. I thought Jesus coming into the temple and talking to the blind man and healing him of his blindness, the blind rabbi, that was a fantastic scene. Uh, when Severus, the centurion played by Sean Bean, confronts Jesus and he's cornered and lets the family go. I also loved the scene at the end where Mary tells Jesus who his real father is and just outright ends up saying, your father is God. It feels as if this is really a conversation Mary and Jesus might have had. It doesn't feel overblown or scripted. It feels like a mother and son, you know, having a moment where they are, have that information shared about who the child's real father was and what that means for their life. And the ending itself, I like that it was downplayed. It's, it's not an over-the-top dramatic ending. It just kind of lets you enjoy it, and, and the movie just sort of ends. So, I loved it, start to finish. I thought this was a great A movie. Uh, the, the things that were wrong with it, in my eyes, were really things that were personal opinion issues, or theological issues that I didn't quite get on board with. But there was just so many good things. I, oh, one more thing. Herod's son killing the snake, and then you realize the snake is not there. He's actually being tormented by a demon. That was a fantastic little element. Visual storytelling, they don't over-explain it, it's just wonderful. And he hears hissing everywhere, because he thinks there's always a snake around, but he, nobody else can see it. That's, that's excellent. So, overall, yes, a solid A movie. I loved this film. And for the things that I disagreed with, or didn't care much for, it offered me so much in return that I loved, and that I could at least see being possible, that I was willing to get on board with it. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you'll check out The Young Messiah. It's on Netflix right now. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.